In this video, we will be conducting a hypothesis test on the effectiveness of special fish food for increasing the lifespan of a goldfish. Let's consider the scenario. A pet food company has developed a special fish food that supposedly increases the lifespan of goldfish. The company hires us to conduct a long-term study on the effectiveness of their fish food. Let's suppose the lifespan of goldfish is normally distributed with an average of 30 years. After collecting data on 25 fish that have been given the special fish food, we find that the average lifespan of these fish was 33 years with a standard deviation of 3 years. Now, the question we are interested in answering is, is there evidence at the 0 0.05 significance level that the special fish food increases the lifespan of goldfish? In order to answer the question, we will follow the four-step process outlined below that can be used in general for hypothesis testing problems. First, we'll formally state the problem in terms of a null and alternative hypothesis. Then we'll identify the procedure needed to solve the problem, apply the procedure, and finally, interpret our results in the context of the problem. Our first step is to formally state the problem. Recall that our parameter of interest is the average lifespan of goldfish that have been given the special fish food, and we're interested in whether or not being fed the special fish food increases the lifespan of goldfish. In other words, will feeding goldfish the special fish food increase their average lifespan to above 30 years? We can formalize this question with a null and alternative hypothesis, where the null hypothesis is that mu is equal to 30, while the alternative hypothesis is that mu is greater than 30, where mu is our parameter of interest for the average lifespan of goldfish that have been given the special fish food. Next, we must identify the procedure needed to solve the problem. Specifically, we need to identify whether to use a z-test or a t-test a one-sided test or a two-sided test. Recall that a z-test is used when we know the standard deviation of the population, while a t-test is used when we don't know the standard deviation of the population. In this case, because we don't know the standard deviation of the lifespan of goldfish, we will use a t-test. Additionally, recall that a one-sided test is used to test whether or not a treatment affects the population parameter in a specific direction, while a two-sided test is used to test whether or not a treatment affects the population parameter at all. In this case, because we're interested in whether the fish food increases lifespan, we will use a one-sided test. Thus, we have identified the procedure needed to solve the problem as a one-sided t-test. Next, we will carry out the one-sided t-test. To do this, we will first need to calculate the t-statistic, then calculate the degrees of freedom associated with our t-statistic, and finally, using the t-statistic and degrees of freedom, we will calculate the one-sided p-value of our sample. Remember that the t-statistic is calculated by x-bar minus mu divided by sigma hat over the square root of n, where x-bar is our sample mean, mu is our population mean, sigma hat is our sample standard deviation, and n is our sample size. In this problem, we know that the average lifespan of goldfish is 30 years, and we looked at a sample of 25 fish that had an average lifespan of 33 years with a standard deviation of 3 years. Thus, we know that mu is equal to 30, n is equal to 25, x bar is equal to 33, and sigma hat is equal to 3. Plugging in these numbers into the formula, we have t is equal to 33 minus 30 divided by 3 over the square root of 25. This simplifies to 3 over 3 fifths, which is equal to 5. Next, remember that the degrees of freedom is equal to the sample size minus 1. In this case, since we had a sample of 25 fish, we have 25 minus 1, which is 24 degrees of freedom. Finally, we can calculate the one-sided p-value of our sample. The p-value of our sample is the probability that we observe results as extreme or more extreme than our sample. This is equal to the probability that the t-distribution with 24 degrees of freedom is greater than 5, which is approximately equal to 2 times 10 to the negative fifth. This result can be found in a table of p-values at the back of your statistics textbook or calculated using a statistical software such as R. Now that we have finished all of our calculations, let's review what we found and interpret our results. 
To answer the question of whether or not the special fish food increased the lifespan of goldfish, we tested a null hypothesis of mu is equal to 30 against an alternative hypothesis of mu is greater than 30. And we found a t-statistic of 5 with 24 degrees of freedom, leading to a p-value of 2 times 10 to the negative fifth. To decide whether or not to reject the null hypothesis, we compare the p-value of our sample to the significance level in the question. In this case, since the p-value is less than the significance level of 0 0.05, we have significant evidence to reject the null hypothesis. In context, we can say that we have found significant evidence that the special fish food increases the lifespan of goldfish, and this concludes our investigation.